गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू द लेसन द लास्ट लीव रिटर्न बाई ओ हैंड्री एंड बिफोर डेट आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई क्लास सो नाउ चिल्ड्रेन आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू द लेसन द लास्ट लीव रिटर्न बाई ओ हैंड्री ओके तो लेट मी गिव यू द इंट्रोडक्शन रिटर्न बाई ओ हैंड्री द स्टोरी द लास्ट लीव इज बेस्ड ऑन द मैक्सिम where there is a will there is a way where there is a will there is a way uh, if we look at the dark side of the thing uh, we shall lose the charm of life children life is full of struggle but even lose there are so many ups and downs in our life but if we will always look upon the downside or the dark side of the thing we will lose the charm of this life and we only get life only once so children let us be optimistic and hopeful and perform our duty sincerely this is actually the message of the chapter also let us be optimistic and perform our duty sincerely okay now children gift of maggie is one of the most famous story written by o henry that refers upon the willingness of a person to fulfill his determination dusk by saki m h munro is also narrated on the same line so it also must be ready by us okay now so we should also read saki uh, dust by saki now i will be telling you the important points of the story and i will be explaining you about the story children first of all in this story this is a story about two friends su and john c okay so my first point is this is a story about two friends what were the, the name of those two friends sue and john c they were the two young artists they lived together in a small flat on the third story of a house so children they lived in a strong a small flat on the third story of a house now john c is illness okay Pneumonia had spread in the locality. John C fell a victim to it. In spite of medicine, she did not recover. She had lost all her hopes from of this of life. She lay by the window side of her room. She looked out through the window. A green ivy creeper hung along the wall. due to rainy and stormy weather it leaves started falling one by one she attests the falling of leaf to the breath she was taking she felt she would die when the love last leaf would fell so she felt that she would surely die if the last leaf will fell she was very much worried she sent for the doctor so her friend was very much worried Uh, so and she sent for the doctor he checked johnsy condition but then there was a no change one day the doctor asked su why johnsy was absorbed in deep thought su did not know johnsy would not get well said the doctor if she loses hope she has to be of a very strong will power the doctor said medicine would not work if she loses hope Uh, if one loses hope of life so duty towards her friend so tried her best to divert johnsy attention to other things of life she talked about clothes and fashions but johnsy mind was not of her illness suddenly one day johnsy spoke loudly 12 11 10 reverse counting she asked her what she was doing and came to know that she has lost hope of life she refused to take soup offered by su su kissed her and tried to encourage her but then there was a no effect on johnsy 
okay so paint her help to sue duties toward her friends or sue children So children, a painter helped John. So Sue tried her best to divert John's mind. Though she was taking lot of care to John, so she was preparing Sue for her. She was combing her hair. She used to uh, encourage her with a nice thought. Okay, she talked about clothes and fashion, but so that the John's mind could divert from the illness. But John's was uh, mind was not of her illness. Suddenly one day, John's spoke loudly. Twelve. Eleven, ten, reverse counting. Sue asked her what she was doing and came to know that she had last hope of life. She refused to take Sue offered by Sue. Sue kissed her and tried to encourage her, but then there was no effect. John C told her that the last leaf will fall. That would be the last day of her life. She would die then. Painter helped to John C. An old painter named Behraman lived on the ground floor. He dreamed of making a masterpiece. So children, he always used to dream that he would make a masterpiece. Sue told of her worries to him. He came to know about John C. Whim of the last leaf. The night was very stormy. It was raining heavily. John C. looked out of the window. Only uh, one leaf had remained in the creeper. She thought she would die with the falling. of that last leaf next morning she looked out again the leaf was still there young green and fresh she was surprised so also saw the last that so also saw the leaf john c at once uttered i been a bad girl i felt it is a sin to want to die so embraces john c joyfully now behraman death In the afternoon, the doctor came. He told them that Behram also had suffered from pneumonia and died in the morning. They found that his clothes and shoes had gone wet. Moreover, they found a ladder and a lamp with some brushes lying near the green creeper. They knew the that Behraman had painted a green leaf on the wall. He had painted a master piece and died. This proved very useful for the survival of Chaucer. So, children. I will um, um, explain the story. Uh, it is autumn. The wind is blowing hard and it is raining heavily. Um, all the leaves on an ivy creeper, except one, have fallen. Why doesn't the last leaf fall? So, Sue and John, see two young artists, shared a small flat. The flat was on third story of an old house. John C fell very seriously ill in November. She was suffering. She had pneumonia. She lay in her bed without moving and just gazing out of the window. In November, she had pneumonia. She lay in her bed without moving and just gazing out of the window. So her friend became very much worried about her. She went for the doctor. Although he came every day, there was no change in John C's condition. One day the doctor took Sue aside and talked to her. Is anything else is worrying John C? No, replied Sue. But why do you ask? The doctor said John C. It seems has made up her mind that she is not going to get well. If she doesn't want to leave, medicine will not help her. Sue tried her best to make John C. takes an interest in things around her. She talked about clothes and fashion, but John C did not responded. 
Johnson continued to lie still on her bed. She used to lie in her bed every time, thinking something seriously. Sue brought her drawing board into Johnson's room and started painting so that her mind would be diverted, but nothing helped her. To take Johnson's mind off her illness, she whistled while working. Suddenly, Sue heard Johnson whisper something. Now, suddenly, Sue realized that her friend Johnson is whispering something. She quickly rushed to the bed and heard Johnson counting backwards. She was looking out of the window and was saying 12. After some time, she whispered 11, then 10, then 9, and so on. Sue anxiously looked out of the window. She was looking an old ivy creeper climbing halfway up the brick wall opposite the window. In the strong wind outside, the creeper was shading the leaves. What is it, dear? Sue asked. Six, whispered Chauncey. They are falling faster now. Three days ago, they were almost a hundred leaves. There are only five left now. It is autumn, said Sue, and the leaf will fall. So Sue told this is autumn season. Definitely the leaf would fall. When the last leaf fall, I will die, said Johnsy with finality. Now, Johnsy told, when the last leaf would fall, she would suddenly die. I have known this for the last three days. Oh, that's nonsense, replied Sue. But what saved, what have old Ivy to do with you getting well? The doctor is confident that you will get better. Johnsy did not say anything. Sue went and brought her a bowl of soup. I don't want any soup, said Chauncey. I'm not hungry. Now there are only four leaves. Let, uh, I want to see the last one fall before it gets dark. And then I will sleep forever. I will die then. Sue so sat on Chauncey's bed, kissed her and said, You are not going to die. I can't draw the curtain for I need the light. I want to finish the painting and get some money for us. Please, my dear friend, she begged Chauncey. Promise not to look out of the window while I paint. All right, said Johnsy. Finish your painting soon, for I want to see the last leaf fall. I am tired of waiting. I have to die, so let me go away peacefully like one of those poor tired leaves. Try to sleep, said Sue. I have to paint an old miner. I will call Behraman up to be an, to be my model. Sue rushed down. Behraman lived on the ground floor. He was a good painter. He was a 60-year-old painter. His lifetime dream was to paint a masterpiece. But that had remained a dream. Sue poured out her worries to Brahman. She told him how Johnsy was convinced that she would die when the last leaf would fall. Is she stupid? asked Brahman. How can she be so foolish? She is running a high temperature, complained Sue. She refused to eat or drink and that worries me a lot. I will come with you and see Johnsy, Behraman said. They tiptoed into the room. Johnsy was sleeping. Sue drew the curtains together and they went to the next room. She peeped out through the window. There was only one leaf on the creeper. It was raining heavily and an icy cold wind was blowing. It seemed as though the leaf would fall any minute, said Behraman. Did not say a word. He went back to his room. Johnsy woke up next morning. In a feeble voice, she asked Sue to draw the curtain. She was nervous. She drew back the curtains very reluctantly. Reluctantly, he means unwilling. Oh, Sue explained as she looked at the vine creeper. Look, there is still one leaf on the creeper. It looks quite green and healthy. In spite of the storm and fierce wind, it did not fall. I heard that wind last night, said Johnsy. I thought it would have fallen. It would surely fall today. Then I will die. You won't die said Sue energetically. You have to leave for your friend. What would happen to me if you die? Johnsy smiled weakly and closed her eyes. After every hour or so, she would look out of the window and find the last leaf is still there. It seems to be climbing to the creeper. In the evening, there was another storm, but the leaf did not fall. Johnsy lay for a long time, looked at the leaf, then she called out to Sue. I've been a bad girl. You have looked after me so lovingly and I have not cooperated with you. I've been depressed and gloomy. The last leaf has shown me how wicked I have been. I have realized that it is a sign to want to die. Sue hugged Johnsy. Then she gave her a lot of hot soup and mirror. Johnsy combed her hair and smiled brightly. In the afternoon, the doctor came. After examining his patient, he told Sue, Johnsy now has to has a will to leave. 
I am confident she will recover soon. Now I must go down the stair and see Bahraman. He is also suffering from pneumonia, but I am afraid there is no hope for him. The next morning, Sue came and sat on John C's bed. She took, taking John C's hand in her, she said, "I have something to tell you. Mr. Bahraman died of pneumonia this morning. He was ill for only two days. The first day." The painter found the janitor found him on his bed. His clothes and shoes were wet, and he was shivering. He had been out in the stormy night. Then they found a ladder and a lantern still lighted lying near his bed. There was also some brushes and green and yellow paints on the floor near the ladder. John C. Dear said, "Sue, look out of the window. Look at the ivy leaf." Haven't you wondered why it doesn't flutter when the wind blows? That's Bahraman's masterpiece. He painted it the night the last leaf fell. And John C. realized that she was leaving just due to him. Okay. So, children, this was this in seven days. Bahraman masterpiece saved John C.'s life. So she had developed a superstition. She felt she would die with the fall of the last. I believe actually a severe attack of pneumonia had left her mind morbid. When she saw the last leaf surviving the windy wet night, her will to live revived. It made her realize that it was really a sin to want to die. And children, here Bahraman was an old painter. He was sixty year old. He had an aim in life to create a masterpiece in painting before. Death. He realized it when he painted the ivy leaf. It was a masterpiece because John C. and Sue, who were artists, could not know it was painting and not a natural leaf. So, children, the theme of this story is that hope sustains life. The doctor rightly says that medicine cannot help if a person has no will to live. John C. had a stupid belief. When the leaf does not fall, she realized that it is a sin, wanting to die. Okay, so with this, children, I uh, finished the lesson, and now I will be doing one poem with you. So, children, we are doing since the time is over, and we have done that chapter also. Still, we are having fifteen minutes with us, thirteen to fifteen minutes. So, I am going to do the lesson. Reach for the top. Here, we are having. Two parts. So we are going to going to do part one, Santosh Yadav. Now this is a very interesting lesson that fills our heart with a desire that nothing is impossible in the world. Okay, and uh, it is for us to realize our dream. So children, if you want to do something, if you have desire of doing something, then you can do it. Don't have this in your mind that nothing is impossible in the world. It is for us to realize our dream. In case we are determined and there is a little help, we can achieve fame, name, and reward. This lesson detail deals about a girl whose name is Santosh Yadav. This is a true story from Haryana. The girl who has got the chance to conquer, ma conquer. Mount Everest not once but twice in her life. She was a great achiever. She is the only woman in the world so set up this type of record. She faces all the difficulties that come in her way and ultimately finds a solution. So now I will be telling you something about the lesson. And I would like to start with the birth of Santosh Yadav. Okay. So in every family, children, birth of a son is regarded as blessing, especially in our Indian continent, India. Okay. So in India, when son is born, born. People think it is a blessing. When the mother of Santosh was expecting a baby, a holy man visited and gave her 
his blessing that the lady was in need of a son. But the grandfather requested that she wanted a girl. The holy man was surprised and showered his blessing. The Santosh was born as the sixth child in the family as there was already five sons. The girl was given the name Santosh which means satisfaction or contentment. But Santosh was different from other girls. So what type of girl she was a rebellion? Her parents were wealthy land owners and could send her to the best school in the capital. But according to the family custom, Santosh was sent to a local village school. She decided to fight the system in her own quiet way. When she turned 16, her parents pressurized her for marriage. She considered marriage the least important thing. She even threatened them that she would never marry if she did not get a proper education. She came to Delhi for education. Her parents refused to pay for her dream education. She politely informed that she would earn money through her own part-time work. This made her parents agree to pay for her education. Santosh passed the high school and went to Jaipur. Now children, as a girl also children, she was very bold. She never used to wear the girls clothes which generally the girls of the village wear she used to wear shorts and all that type of thing and she openly used to rebel and tell her mother that it is not written anywhere not to put such type of clothes education in Jaipur finally children she was she went to Delhi and her final uh, she got education her higher education in Jaipur Rajasthan and she studied in a very from a very famous college of Jaipur. Okay, she joined Maharani College, one of the most renowned college of Jaipur, and got a room in Kasturba Hostel. The hostel faced the Aravali Hills. Also, children, the room where she was living, that hostel, it was facing the Aravali room. The hostel faced the Aravali Hill. There she was a villager going up the hill, and suddenly vanishing after a while then children she was a villager going up the hill and suddenly vanishing after a while santosh decided to find out the truth she met a few mountaineering and asked them to join they agreed then santosh did not look back for her determination she enrolled herself in a course at Uttra Kashi's nehru institute of mountaineering after completing her education in jaipur she went to the institute for training. She informed her parents about it. Beginning of expeditions. Uh, thereafter, she went on expedition every year. Her skill started improving and then she got a remarkable skill in bearing cold and altitude. Her iron will tolerance and uh, mental toughness lent her a helping hand. In 1992, she asked her Aravali mountaineers if she could join them. She was hardly 20 when she conquered Mount Everest. She became the young woman of the world to achieve this feat. Concern for others. Now children, Santosh Yadu, she was a very good girl. Her seniors were very impressed by, impressed by her skill. In 1992, she gave a special care to a climber who lay dying at South Colney. She also saved another climbing by sharing her own ox oxygen cylinder. Mohan Singh and shared her oxygen cylinder with him, which generally no one do because if oxygen uh, children and finish then it means that you are in a very difficult position so nobody but to save another life she children shared her oxygen also and Santos found herself a member of an Indo-Nepalese women expeditions 
Then she conquered the Everest for a second time. Thus, she placed India on a unique place in mountaineering. The Indian government honored her with the Padam Shri. When she hoisted the national flag on the Mount Everest, her feelings were indescribable. She said, I felt proud as an Indian. From there, she brought down some 500 kilograms of garbage. So, children, you can see that this girl who was born and brought up in a village, okay, and where uh, children, um, she, her, though her final condition of the um, financial condition of the family was good, but then also there was a lot of hindrance in her education. Okay, and uh, a marriage as early as she was the last thing on her mind. She threatened her friend that she would never marry if she did not get a proper education. She left home and got herself enrolled in a school in Delhi. When her parents refused to pray for her education, she politely informed them of her plans to earn money by working part-time to pay her school fees. Her parents then agreed to pay for her education. Okay, so children, uh, she was a very bold girl. Okay. Hmm. And children, she was not like the other traditional, uh, other girl who like, love to wear traditional Indian dresses. So those prefer shorts. Looking back, she says, now from the very beginning, I was quite determined that if I choose a correct and a rational path, the other around me had to change, not me. So children, she was a very bold girl. She told if she would choose a good path, definitely others will change. And children, she was a girl full of, she was a girl which was full of determination, was full of determination. Okay. And whatever the custom, prevailing custom was there, what she used to think if it is suitable she used to follow otherwise she never used to follow that custom so and she was very much concerned about teammate okay she was concerned about for the environment also children uh, she was a great and courageous environmentalist while she had finished her unfurling of the national flag at the mount Everest. She was the one who collected 500 kilograms of garbage from there. She brought it down on the earth. Okay. And children, she got into the record uh, she, both, both times she conquered Mount Everest. And children, it was due to her climbing skill, physical fitness, strong determination, mental strength. And moreover, she was courageous and an iron built Indian girl. And now, children, uh, Santosh began to climb mountains when she saw the villagers climbing and vanishing on the rubblies from her hostel room. This was a play, um, thing which impressed her in her life when she went to the hostel and she was living in the Kasturba hostel and she used to see the scene from her window that people are climbing to the mountain and they are children and in this way she was request uh, she re um, she was interested and she requested them to join they were ready and the santosh was motivated towards climbing So children, this is all and uh, we all know that uh, children, she was a great uh, person because a person children always, uh, they lose hope, uh, children after, they are so tired physically and they have to work so hard that only once climbing on Everest is enough but here she is the only woman in the world who has climbed twice. Okay, so you can see how strong willpower she was having. Santosh was highly recognized for her achievement. The Indian government bestowed upon her one of the nation's top honor. She was honored with the Padam Shri. It is the highest honor of her. So you can see 
children her hard work due to her hard work she had gained padam shri so children uh, here we are and uh, so even children she was a girl who decided that she would be living in delhi she would be living in delhi alone uh, and she would earn by herself to pay her fees so you can see how determined uh, she was a girl who was full of determination with this i end the chapter thank you and have a nice day ahead good day